Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's morning. meeting of the Jones Library Board of Trustees. I'm going to ask you, as per our custom, to um, signal that you are here. Tammy? Yes. Jean? Yes. Lee? Yes. Barr? Yes. And um, Austin is um, Austin is here. Um, I know of no changes or additions to the uh, posted agenda. So we're going to go directly to the posted agenda. Bob, I see Bob Pam has just joined us. Bob, can you signal you're here? I am here. Thank you very much. Gene? Uh, for this agenda item, just wanted to uh, state that I'll be recusing myself after discussions with the Massachusetts Ethics Commission because my spouse is an employee of the Friends of the Jones. Um, so I'm going to log out of the meeting. If somebody could take the minutes while I'm gone and then alert me when the discussion for that particular this particular agenda item is finished, and then I can log back in. Thank you. Thank you, Far. You going to take the minutes, Far? Yes. Thank you. That's great. Thanks for volunteering to do that. Okay. Then the next item, item three, is the um, consideration of a motion. I'm going to read the motion to submit a letter to the MBLC requesting an extension to our deadline to sign a contract with a general contractor from January, June 30th, 2024 to December 31st, 2024. If there is a second to that motion, I'll say something very briefly and ask uh, Sharon to um, uh, explain some more. Lee? A uh, second. Thank you. So what this uh, motion is asking the board to do is to authorize the submission of a letter to the MBLC that would ask the MBLC to extend its funding deadline. Uh, in asking the MBLC to extend its funding deadline, uh, what we would be doing is we would be putting in place a process which would allow us to continue to explore the possibility that we could move forward with a renovation and expansion uh, plan. Having voted to recommend to the town manager, the town manager turned down the, the bids that were submitted. Uh, if MBLC were to approve our request for extension, we would contemplate going out to a rebid um, on the project uh, hopefully in September. Between now and September, we would uh, work uh, through the Jones Library Building Committee uh, on the possibility of making some changes to the design of the project that might be useful in reducing its cost. Uh, it is unlikely that in, in and of itself, any design changes uh, would significantly, would uh, be sufficient in and of themselves to close the gap between what we have budgeted and anticipated and the borrowing authorization that the town uh, has authorized and what the initial bid uh, was. The hope, however, is that by making some changes to the design of the project and by going out to rebid uh, the changes in the design, plus we hope uh, competitive bids uh, would uh, close the gap between the, the borrowing authorization and what the low bid um, would be. Sharon, do you want to say um, anything else about the proposal to submit this letter? I think I think you just said everything that I would that I would say. Um, you know, we have. We received the one bid from Fontaine, um, e even though six general contractors had been pre-qualified, and even though the filed sub-bids came in almost $84,000 under budget, Fontaine's bid was 18% higher. Um, thus, the Attorney General's office has ruled that we can go out to bid again. Um, and I, uh, yeah, so I I think we should just take questions. That's, 
I, I think Austin just hit all the all the points. Okay, the the motion is on the floor and uh, discussion is open. Comments, questions, views. Tammy. I know one issue was the list of all the addenda. It, if if um, we reconfigure the the bid. Um, process can those be incorporated into the design and not because that was seemed to be one issue and I don't know if that's a question for Ellen or that's just yes. something that can easily be done it will all be incorporated it's it, the way we do it it gets incorporated as we go so yes it's all incorporated okay thank you uh Bob him um It, there was a, a report which said that that initially the uh, subcontractors were supposed to include the elevator work, but that no bids had come in in that, and that therefore uh, whatever that cost was uh, did not get included in our statement of how much the subcontractors were going to spend. And therefore, if you then added it to the, the contractor side of things, um, and moved it back to the subcontractor side, that would have meant that the subcontractor costs were also higher than anticipated. Is that accurate? Ellen, do you want to tell us about your experience yeah. with the elevator issue? Sure. So, Bob, good question. So the on most projects nowadays, we do not get elevator bids, right? It's just the, the method of the elevator subcontractors so when you don't get that in if um tim was here from colleges he would he would <clears throat> chime in as well <clears throat> so the when we don't get a, a sub bid for the elevators it gets assigned to the gc has to carry the cost so that should in theory bob be our in that fontaine's cost already but it's it's not unusual not to get an elevator bid and it gets us so it gets assigned to the GC. So they so that was they had to have carried it. Fontaine, that's in Fontaine's number. Uh, I'm not surprised by that or questioning okay. that. the The question was when the estimates of what the subs would have cost us, did it include the elevator? And since it didn't include the elevator, um, did that make the the estimate not match with the actual? I would have to double check the numbers exactly, Bob, because we were under on the filed subbids. But I, if I answered that, I would be not. I would not be comfortable. Certain. Yes, I understand. I, I, I can check and, and get back and let Sharon know, and she can get back to you. That would be fine. Okay. Thank you, um, Austin. I have a second question, which is different. Sure, go ahead, Bob. Okay, and that is um, obviously what we would like is for the uh, cost of the, of the project to go down, but the other side of this whole uh, arrangement involves how much we can raise uh, from the capital campaign. And I was wondering if we could get some kind of report from the capital campaign as to how all of this is affecting them and it, to how they anticipated affecting them in the future. Lee, do you want to say anything about how this is affecting uh, Capital Campaign? Well, um, if this motion passes, uh, and if um, uh, the negotiations with, with the MBLC uh, go forward, then we, the Capital Campaign would vigorously pursue uh, getting more pledges in the interval between the time the MBLC decides that we can have the extension and the time that um, the bids are opened. Okay, thank you, Lee. Okay, in the past, if, if I might continue. Sure, uh, yeah, go ahead. One of the explanations for why uh, contributions had been slow prior to November and December was that there was too much uncertainty about the project. 
Uh, if we now extend this for six more months, once again, there will be uncertainty because we won't at that point know what the bids will come in at, bid or bids. Um, and so the question is, uh, is there something that is going to change in terms of the probability of uh, donors coming forward during this period uh, with substantial sums, either as pledges or cash? Uh, I, as always, I preface my statements about fundraising with this statement that you, you can't you can't read the end of the book first. However, I would and I can't you know I I cannot speak for the capital campaign committee in advance of a meeting of the capital campaign committee, but I would anticipate urging the capital campaign committee to um, pull all the stops out not to collect money, but to collect statements of intention. Because that, the, the, the more statements of intention that we have, the higher the sum intended to pay out should the project go forward, the more likely it is that the project would go forward. Uh, and since, as I say, we're not, I don't anticipate that we would be, because there is still uncertainty, I don't anticipate that we would be actually asking people to give money in this interval, just statements of intention to give money should the project go forward. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Bob, are you all set now? Yes, thank you. Okay. Other comments or questions? So uh, I do want to just remind us that uh, as we go forward, if we were to approve this, and if the MBLC were to be approved an extension, uh, not only would we be doing the redesign work that we can do uh, to further reduce the cost of the project, but the Buildings and Facilities Committee of the board will be working diligently on a plan, a contingency plan uh, that we would want to finalize less in September when we rebid, uh, we are in the same position that we are now um, that we are now in. Uh, I do want to also just say, and here Ellen, I can use your your help. Mm -hmm. uh, there is some basis of belief that a single bid uh, tends to drive the costs up by roughly 20% in and of itself, everything else to the contrary, notwithstanding. Our file, single file, file uh, GC bid was about 18% over what we uh, hoped it would be. Um, Ellen, can you say a little bit about uh, the impact of a single bid on project costs? Yes. So the so the Army Corps of Engineers did this study that the and that's what the estimators based their estimates on uh, receiving five bids um, on average. The and we have a chart that we can share. As you get less and less interest, you get less bids in the percentage of of being over budget increases. So on this chart, through this study, it's if you receive one bid, you typically will be 20% over. Two bids, you'll be less than, I don't know what the number is, but as you go down towards getting five bids, that's what our estimate is based on. And that is that is not just our estimator, that is the industry. Right, so that's again, part of why we uh, might uh, want to consider this um, effort because we have some indication that the single file bid in and of itself, absent competition, uh, increased uh, what we uh, would have hoped we would have gotten from um, bidders. 
uh, we will make a concerted effort to work with general contractors who are in express interest in the project uh, to uh, help uh, ensure that at the end of the day in September, when we are inviting bids, we will end up uh, over the bidding process actually getting uh, more than one uh, more than more than one bid. Uh, this remains, I think, uh, an important uh, project for us, uh, as well as for the as well as for the town. We cannot do anything to fundamentally re reduce the square footage of the proposal, uh, and nor would we want to do anything that would alter the programmatic vision of the proposal. Uh, we wouldn't want to do the latter because we believe that the programmatic vision remains the right one for the library and for the town. And we wouldn't want to do the former because uh, MBLC wouldn't allow us to do it uh, and also uh, retain the state funds. Bob Pam. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when someone is trying to sell a house, the, the, the received wisdom is that you do it early in the spring um, before people have selected something else. Uh, uh, so we put out a uh, an, an offer to, to uh, contract early in the spring. And uh, if we now do that in the fall, will the six pre-qualified bidders already have jobs and consequently no longer be available? Um, we don't we don't exactly know what will happen with the six pre-qualified um, bidders. Uh, we can't, in anticipation, know what it is that they're going to be uh, what they're going to be committed to doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe what you said is accurate. That what you said is accurate for houses may be also accurate for uh, general contractors. Uh, that the timing of our invitation to bid may have coincided with uh, what sometimes is called summer slam. Uh, so it may be that going out to bid, uh, you know, asking for bids in September with the idea that we would get the bids in early November may be better, um, better timing in order to get more interest from general contractors. Ellen, is that? That's correct. And that's what we have been advised from uh, the two independent estimators, because it's just when the this project went out, it was January and the bids were due through through early spring, as Bob was saying. And the timing of that for the for the pre-qualified bidders, we know it didn't work for a couple that it just they were their bond caps were met. Um, and so a lot of work there's a huge crunch of work, especially in the college and uh, college university and public school market. The, the summer months are crazy. And that's what they're called summer slammers. And a lot of the GCs are just booked with that. And then, so they're, they'll be looking to fill their um, docket again, come in September. So that, that's what we're, that's what we're looking forward to. But the, it does have to be, you know, there's a, well, there's a little bit of work to get to, you know, make sure the contractors are interested, right? That you've got, because Fontaine was very nice in giving us, a, uh, you know, just a general overview of things. And they go out to five to 10 bidders and they were only getting, you know, one to two bids back because everybody's so busy. When you said bidders, you mean subcontractors? Sub subcontractors, correct, Austin. Okay, other, uh, yeah, Lee. Uh, this question's sort of been answered, but I wanna just make sure I understood it correctly. Given that the building committee and the architects are gonna be working on some modifications to the interior, these modifications will be done in such a way that when the contractors are looking at the project that they are bidding on, everything will be in the package already. There won't be addenda 
complicating things. There, it, oh, sorry, Austin, can I answer that? Yeah, go ahead. So Lee, all the addenda and all the art, the addenda from the previous bid round will be incorporated into the drawings. That's our, that's already done. Right. So any, when we, when this goes back out on the street, as we say, there'll be some questions. There always is. And we have right. to answer those in a, in a addenda. Um, but what we won't have is that we, um, this project went out without the AV, um, consultants, all their date, all their drawings. And that was one of the biggest uh, addenda pieces because that came after, because they weren't hired till very late in the process. So that that's what people keep referring to as, oh, there was all these sheets. There was one or two spec sections and then the drawings. So all that's incorporated. We will have some more questions. Hopefully there they we won't have we can't control that lead, but we hope to have more of a, um, you know, we won't have any new spec sections going out like we had to do last time. And, Thank you. And just, just to add to that, um, Ellen, uh, any changes that we would make in the summer would all be incorporated into this new bid set in, in case. That was my question. Looking for that. Yeah, sorry. That was my question. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm sorry no I, if I wasn't no clear, problem. but thank you. Uh, I also want to be clear that uh, we would, um, if we vote to recommend, uh, if we vote to submit this letter to the MBLC, this will also be reviewed tomorrow at a meeting of the Jones Library uh, Building Committee. Bob Pam. Is there a target in terms of what reductions in anticipated cost um, are planned between now and September? In other words, you know, are, are you looking to uh, make changes that, that will reduce costs by $1 million, by $2 million, by $11.32? I, I just, I, I don't yet have a, a feel for what it is that, that we are going to be trying to accomplish between now and September. I don't think we can really know the answer to that question until we do the redesign uh, redesign work. Uh, we can't know exactly what the cost savings will be, but we wouldn't be doing this if we didn't think the cost savings would be significant. How substantial are the redesigns? That's essentially the question. Well, we don't yet know what the redesign will um, will reveal that we hope it'll be substantial enough to save a significant sum of money uh, over where we are in terms of the one bid from the general contractor. Tammy. Um, yeah. Do we, do we have any idea if the MBLC is, is open to this and will be supportive? I assume they will. They want the project to go forward, but... I just wonder if there's any preliminary ideas about that. Sharon, do you want to say anything? Yeah, yeah. I've spoken with the MBLC a few times, and yes, they absolutely are very supportive. They absolutely want this uh, mm -hmm. project to move forward. So um, great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other, uh, anything else on the MBLC extension request? So I'm going to actually uh, suggest that we do the following. There are 25 attendees. And before taking a vote, I would like to actually give people who are in attendance an opportunity, if they want to, to make, um, to make a comment. Um, I do want to just say, Farah, uh, did you want to say something before I... No, go ahead. I just I I, I want to give people an opportunity to make a comment. I would hope that people would keep their comments um, brief, and I want to just remind anybody that we will not be engaging in a back and forth uh, during public comment. And then once public comment is done, uh, we can come back and um, 
<coughs> take a vote on the motion that's on the on the floor. Bar. Um, I just had a couple of edits on the letter. Would we do that after before we take the vote? Sorry, Sharon. Um, are they substantive edits? Uh, no. Should I just work on that with Sharon later? Well, um, why don't you tell us what the edits okay. are that you're proposing? Are they stylistic rather than substantive? A uh, couple are stylistic, but there are a couple of just wording questions. Why don't you tell us what you have in mind? Okay, the, the main one would be um, in the second set of bullet points, our team proposes the following timeline. Just wondering if it should say contract with FAA for additional design work to reduce costs. Yeah. And the other things are things like, um, are just minor edits, which I can do with Sharon later. Thank you. I actually think that that's fine to add what you had to the first one, but if you look at the second, it actually is doing saying the same thing. But that's fine. Okay, so um, now opportunity for public comment. If any member of the public wishes to speak, if they would raise their virtual hand. Okay, I have seven members now, eight members of the public that wish to that wish to speak. We're gonna take those eight. Now nine. Now we're gonna we're gonna stop at those nine. Okay. So thank you. Um Claire Bertrand. Yes, hi, Claire Bertrand, 610 Bay Road. Uh, I just wanted to voice my support for this project and thank the library trustees for your work to uh, keep this ball moving forward. Um, I think we've heard some very rational reasons why the, the bump in the road occurred. Um, and while it's, um, you know, it's bigger numbers, um, it is stunning, it's too bad. Um, it's not, it doesn't mean we need to give up. This is a valuable project. The community wants this project. It has been supported in a townwide vote. Um, and there are other issues like um, increases that we have seen um, right now The on the docket tonight, the town council has to tackle the purchase of a new fire truck, a fire pumper. And it's come in at they have to revote it because it has come in at 15 to 18% over the initial cost. Of course we need that fire pumper. Vote yes. Of course, that is an obvious yes. And I know um, you know, the North Amherst Library project was 80% more than anticipated, but it kept going. And we are very thankful to that generous donor. And I think that. Uh, residents of Amherst, I'll speak for my own family. We value the library. We think this is a great project. And we thank you for not giving up on it. Keep hope alive. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Okay, next on the list is uh, Jeff Lee. Yeah, um, so there will be additional design work to try to bring the the excuse me, cost down. Uh, I'm Jeff Lee from South Amherst, by the way. Um, curious how much cost is anticipated and who will be paying for it? The town's already incurred a very significant expenditure on this project. So we really need to keep an eye on that. And also, um, I find it unfortunate you didn't include in the packet the letter that you're planning to write to the M MBLC. You know, be Good for the public to um, have a look at that. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Pamela Rooney. 
Hi, Pam Rooney, Cottage Street. Uh, Jeff Lee actually just asked one of the questions that I was uh, wondering about. Um, if the redesign happens, who will pay for that redesign effort? And do we need to restructure the MOA with the town uh, to accomplish that? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it looks like uh, Letitia LaFollette. Thank you. Um, Letitia LaFollette, 18 Dana Street. Um, I think I can speak for my husband, George Ryan, and our daughters as well. We really support the library. This is a very important project for the town. As Claire Bertram already said, the, uh, there was a town-wide vote in support of it. Um, this is a bump in the road. I'm so grateful to uh, the library uh, trustees and um, the building committee for um, thinking of how we can actually continue the project. So please don't give up. Um, it's, it's really, really critical for our town um, for that this project go forward. And I think you have some very good um, strategies uh, for making sure that this actually will work. So I urge you to vote yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your comment. Kelly Irwin. Hi, uh, Kelly Irwin in South Amherst. And I just wanna say thank you so much for your persistence and your tenacity. This has been a long and arduous process. And um, my neighbors and I are so looking forward to this new library when it's done. And thank you for managing the bumps in the road. Keep on keeping on. Thanks. Thank you for your comment. Uh, next is Arlie. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, hello. Um, hi, I live in South Amherst also. I just wanna say, um, you know, if this project doesn't go forward, um, I kind of, I agree more with Bob Pam, um, that there are many benefits to this project and it, you know, would be wonderful, but there would also be benefits to the smaller, modest um, project of renovation and repair. And the other thing is, you know, I spoke with Hilda Greenbaum in her hospital bed about a week ago or two weeks ago she's very uncomfortable with the financing of this project. She was very clear about that and that the town is taking on too much risk. Um, she told me the whole story about her support of the North Amherst Library and how uh, the town manager was so careful and she's not that comfortable at this point with the Jones. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for your comment. Uh, next is Maria. Thank you, Maria Kopicki, South Amherst. I don't see how you can take a vote on this today for a couple of reasons. Number one, you don't know the cost as uh, Pam and Jeff have pointed out. You don't know who would pay for that. Um, and we actually don't know who would pay for the money that's already been spent up to this point. And to go into this without a goal to say, we don't know how much we're going to reduce this by, what's, I'm, how would you direct anybody? What would you, what would you be telling them? Um, I also think you have to, you have a fundamental misunderstanding between association and cause and effect in terms of having one bidder. When you have, the number of bidders is known after they bid. To say that there's a study that showed when there's only one bid, there's a higher cost only means that when you only have one bid for a project, there's going to be an, an increased cost. It doesn't mean that it is driving that, that the, having one bid is driving that increase. You, you guys just have to understand stats better to understand that having one bidder does not mean that is not why you are seven million dollars over that's not the only reason what it does tell you is that this project is going to cost a lot more than you said it was going to cost and that's not a bump in the road that's a mountain 
Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you for your comment. Uh, next on the list is Kent Ferber, I believe. Kent. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Kent Ferber, 41 Station Road in South Amherst. I strongly concur with the uh, vote to an undertake a rebid process for the building project. You've outlined a good, if not certain, possibility that there's a path forward for financing the project using a combination of more robust bid process, selected changes in the plan, which don't imperil its essence, redoubled fundraising, and the judicious use of the library's endowment. While that may incur additional expense, opting for the alternative at this point would be disastrous. There's no doubt in my mind that if the project is abandoned right now, you can be sure that 10 years from now, some set of library trustees, town counselors, and town administrators will be in the same distress, scratching their heads, wondering what we were thinking, trying to figure out how the town can find more of its money to fix the problems we left them that were not only avoidable, but also made considerably worse by having spent more of the town's money in order to avoid them. The police station and the town hall, both considered extravagant at their time, are vivid reminders of the wisdom of investment and long-term physical plant future. We're now suffering the results of Amherst's singularly bad habit of avoiding its physical plant responsibilities by deferring them for someone else to solve. It's time to use all available means to break that habit. Even for those 10 years, any alternative would be an embarrassing failure to respond to the clearly expressed desires of the citizens of the town for the kind of community center that the library project would continue to, prov to provide. The town clearly wants this project. I repeat, selecting that option at this point makes no sense. Whatever short-term costs or belt tightening might be required to move forward with the project would be completely forgotten 10 years from now leaving our successors not the heap of problems we've inherited from that kind of strategy, but a vibrant, healthy institution playing a major role in defining the heart and soul of our town. That's the legacy I would like to leave. And I hope you're willing to, in Lee's words, pull out all the stops to try to achieve it. Thank you for your dedication to the library. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Okay, I see uh, we have gone through the list of people uh, who had said they wanted to make public comments. I see three hands still up, but I assume they are just uh, left over from uh, before. Um, great. Um, Maria, are you, are, you, are you still there? Do you still want to make another comment? No, I'm just on a phone and I'm having trouble getting my hand oh, okay. down. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for your comment. Okay. So now back uh, to the motion. I want to remind you the motion is to submit a letter to the MBLC requesting an extension to our deadline to sign a contract with the general contractor from June 30th, 2024 to December 31st, 2024. Okay, is there any other discussion of the motion? Okay, ready to vote on the motion. So on the question of submitting a letter to the MBLC requesting an extension, uh, Tammy Ely. Yes. Farah? <clears throat> yes. Bob Pam? I'm going to have to make a statement before I vote, if that's all right. Um, uh, sure, go ahead. This would be a huge increase in price. Let, on let, me just, let me just interrupt you. If you make yes. a statement yes, uh, before you vote, then we are going to have to reopen the discussion so people who have an opportunity to respond to your, your statement. Then can we postpone the vote and I'll make the statement first? Uh, sure, Bob. We'll we'll 
what we're going to do, if it's okay, is we're going to stop the vote. You can make your statement. And then we'll re if people want to respond, they can respond. Yes. Uh, and then we will, then we will re-vote. Generally, the time to make a statement is during a discussion. And so when people ask for a comment, but go ahead, sure, absolutely. Happy to hear you. Okay. This week, the huge increase in price on the expansion project brought the expected support letters for continuing the effort in hopes that correspondingly huge changes will occur to make the project feasible. I hope that at this meeting we would hear, I hoped at this meeting, that we would hear from the capital campaign that a coalition of wealthy contributors have pledged $5 million in new funds to, to the project. Absent that, I don't see how continuing for six more months and the expenditure of probably another $250,000 or more on redesign and fundraising will produce an affordable project. Let me reiterate what I said last week. From December, when the council approved the $46 million project, to May 1, basically before the bid was opened, new contributions, the new funds that I was then told would be generously released by the end of uncertainty about the project, totaled $425,000. Of that sum, $250,000 came from Amherst College as the first of four annual payments. Local non-institutional gifts averaged $35,000 per month during these five months. We had needed an average of $100,000 per month from local sources to meet our goals. Now that the bid price has risen more than $6 million, the monthly goal has at least doubled. The project is again uncertain at best. What will change for the capital campaign in the next six months? Will new funds come pouring in? I don't see that happening. I can't see relying on the bidders to reduce their prices as our solution. They too see uncertainty on the timing or actuality of the project as a cost to be incorporated in their bids. And after years of saying that the design is lean and mean, can it now be rejiggered in three months to create a final biddable scope of work that would cut out several million dollars in costs? without deferring some large items to some future funding source yet to be determined. That's an interesting proposition. Design decisions on the project have not been beyond questioning or debate. I have asked some of those questions myself. When the approved budget for landscaping rose from about $400,000 to about $2 million, I questioned it. I have asked about many of the design decisions, sometimes for practical or aesthetic reasons, but sometimes for cost. My main concern has always been the library's ability to function properly if shortfalls in fundraising became too large, and that either paying the shortfall from the corpus of our endowment or by borrowing to cover it and then paying debt service on it would reduce operating funds below our needs. I believe the risk is no longer acceptable. The size of the bid has also brought the expected letters of opposition to continuing the project. That is neither surprising nor inappropriate. Whether the concern is about its impact on the town budget or on other capital projects or on personal tax rates or its impact on the library, people have a right and duty to engage in discussion about a civic project. Supporters of the project were encouraged to write, so have opponents. This is a major undertaking of the town and it is worth all of the attention it receives. It is how we as a library respond to criticism that now concerns me. The library has committed itself to implementing policies supporting diversity, equity, and inclusion. That is right. But this support must also include inclusion of opinion, diversity of judgment, equity in treatment. We need to not just allow speech, but to hear it, listen to it, engage with it, with openness and respect. 
In the end, disagreements are inevitable, but they can't, they mustn't, end with rejection of the speaker. I have usually received this response to my own contrary views here on the board, and I appreciate it. I raise this because a strong supporter of the library chose to ascribe project opposition and delays in a widely distributed support letter to mudslinging, falsehoods, and rumor mongering. Because the writer is also a consultant to the library, it was taken as reflecting the views of the library, although he stated that he was writing only for himself. Frankly, his comments were destructive to the unifying values and the immediate interests of the library. It would be helpful if we as a board make it clear that we do not agree with such characterizations. So in summary, I do not support the motion to seek six more months of review and I will vote no. Thank you, Bob. Thanks for your comment. So again, now the floor is open. Uh, I fully agree with what you uh, said about listening, listening respectfully. I think we have done that. I don't think that we have been dismissive in any way. That's number one. Number two, what will change? What will change is uh, that we will reach certainty about this project. That's what will change. What will change will be further effort to see whether or not we can save costs in the design. That will change. What will change is if we abandon this project, we will abandon the needs of teens, of children, of English language learners, of uh, people, diversity within the community. What will change will be a vision of a public library that serves the needs of this town for decades to come. That will, that will change if we were to abandon this project now. Uh, we need to do our best to determine what we can do to make this project work. That's what we will be doing over the next several months. At the same time, the Buildings and Facilities Committee will be developing the plan should the rebidding process not work. That, that's, that's also an important thing to say. Okay, any other comments okay i'm going to ask us to vote again and again i would be grateful if we could vote now all discussion is closed tammy yes far yes lee yes bob no and austin votes uh austin votes yes Okay, thank you very much. That is it for our business for this morning. So we will, we will, uh, we will, Bob? Um, at the meeting last week, I had not included the endowment results for uh, April 30th, and I just wanted to add that to the record if I Great, could. Thank you, Bob. Okay, the endowment as of April 30th was $8,897,109. The Woodbury Fund was $728,838. Thank you, Bob. Farah? I was just going to say that I asked Eugene to come back, and I was going to ask Bob to repeat that so Eugene could hear that. Sorry. Okay, the whole line. Gene, are you back? I am back. Um, we don't have to reread anything because I can watch the recording of the event oh. at the same time, which I do anyway to check the accuracy of any minutes that um, I've written. Okay. Okay, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for, for thank your Thank you, work. Austin. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.